caught on tape, someone damages a well-known Halloween display outside a central Kentucky home. Now the homeowner says it's ruined his celebration. A major setback to the economy in one central Kentucky city. A plant will be cutting hundreds of jobs. Tomorrow is the official kickoff of Breeders' Cup, and the celebrations are in full swing tonight. This is WKYT News. Good evening. Thanks for staying up late with us. A mean trick just days before Halloween. Tonight, a Lincoln County man says someone damaged a Halloween display that grabs attention in his neighborhood every year. And the vandalism was all caught on surveillance video. Garrett Weimer talks to the angry homeowner in tonight's top story. Bill Hurt began his Halloween tradition in 1993. We just started doing it, and the kids like it. And we had fun doing it. Since then, the display at his house has grown and grown and yeah. grown. But what was meant as a Halloween treat now is missing some major pieces. They got a Michael Myers mask, a Freddy Krueger mask, and a vampire mask. Gone, thanks to an unwelcome visitor overnight. Well, it's pretty much destroyed this. This was the most popular display. The final trick, however, may be on the thief. Cameras on Hertz property caught someone stealing the haunted heads. I actually told the police that they could just tell me who it was and I would take them to the woodshed like Andy Griffith, and, but I don't think that will happen. With trick or treat on Saturday, Hertz says he's not sure what he's going to do. We are considering taking it all down and just forgetting about Halloween this year. We haven't decided yet. It's obvious Hurt has put a lot of time, money, and effort into the decorations. A lot of them are homemade, even. Another reason he just won't say what he'd like to tell the person who vandalized it. Not on camera. I don't have anything pleasant to say to the person who uh, did this. In Stanford, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Hurt says his display has been vandalized before when his characters became part of people's practical jokes, but he says this time is different because it looked like someone took the heads just to take them. Tonight, the search continues for a Marion County man accused of shooting at two police officers. State police swarmed a stretch of Highway 61 in Cumberland County late this afternoon after someone reported seeing Floyd Cook. A sheriff's deputy also spotted Cook, but police say he ran off into some nearby woods. Police say at one point, Cook asked a couple if he could get a ride, but they recognized him and said no. State police brought in helicopters and canine units to help with the search, but hours later, they had not had much luck finding him. Lexington police tell us they received a tip this afternoon that Cook was in a barn near Ironworks Pike, but by the time they got there, they say they had figured out that Cook was not there. Police say that Cook shot a Tennessee police officer last weekend and later fired shots at a Kentucky State Trooper in Cumberland County. The Breeders' Cup begins tomorrow and it kicks off a busy weekend here in central Kentucky. But will we have nice weather? Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look at the forecast. Million dollar question, right? That, that really is. And it's been a question we've been talking about for a long while now. And the answer coming for your Friday is yes, it's going to kick off in a very nice fashion in terms of the weather. For the past several days, it has been ugly across the Bluegrass State. Cold front is well to our east now. So we've got that cooler wind that is blowing across the region from the northwest. Yes, it's a cooler wind, but it's also a drying wind that is out there. Temperatures right now dropping already into the low and mid 40s across much of central and eastern Kentucky. Mount Sterling leading the chilly charge down to 43. Many areas waking up to temperatures tomorrow morning into the upper 30s. A little frost on some of the pumpkins for the middle of the day. Temperature right around 50, partly sunny. Second half Heading home on your Friday, uh, heading out to Keeneland tomorrow afternoon for the uh, first day of the Breeders' Cup, about 57 degrees around 5 o'clock with a partly sunny sky. Then we go toward Halloween on Saturday. Rain chances are going to increase a little bit. I've got a new hour-by-hour -hour forecast we'll break down for you to try to time the rains into town for all those big events out there, guys. It's going to be a very close call on the arrival of the drops. That's in a few minutes. Chris, thank you. Thousands of visitors have arrived in Lexington for the Breeders' Cup, and they're enjoying a night on the town before the horses get out of the gate tomorrow. And downtown Lexington was much busier than normal on this Thursday night as hotels and restaurants filled up with horse racing fans. Our Monique Blair has the story.
Winners Cup's coming and everything, so we wanted to come out here and celebrate. From the food to the music. Breeders' Cup Eve, a night full of excitement in Lexington. And the weekend ahead is expected to echo that same emotion. The event is so big, it's drawing in thousands upon thousands of people from all over the world. It's very nice here. Yes, you good music, a good drink and eat. So we have groups coming in from Chicago, from Nashville, from Charlotte. And although the city and Keeneland have made many adjustments to accommodate the influx in people, David Quinn and a few of his friends tell me they had to rent a home after they ran into an issue when trying to book a hotel at the last minute. A few of us booked really late. We couldn't get a hotel. But some Lexington locals that I spoke with tell me the booked hotels are a positive for the city. They say all the hotels are full between the hotels and the restaurant and just the uh, boosting the economy and people coming to see Lexington is pretty neat. Now, aside from the anticipation of Breeders' Cup almost being here, the very people who live in Lexington tell me they're just really proud of the emphasis this event has put on the city. Just in awe of it all. I mean, just the excitement of everyone being downtown. And I mean, this is history, and we're a part of it. And I wanted to be down here in the midst of it all. In Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. And good weather tonight to boot. Well, the first race at Keeneland tomorrow is at 12.30. The first Breeders' Cup race tomorrow is at 3.30. And we'll have expanded Breeders' Cup coverage throughout the day. Join Dave Baker, Dick Gabriel, Deanne Stevens, and Jennifer Palumbo for Championship Friday at the Breeders' Cup. You can see it from noon to 3 on the CW Lexington. And we'll be live from Keeneland with races and special guests. New tonight, a Mount Sterling factory plans to close, leaving hundreds of people without a job. Pentair announced today its facility will be shutting down at the end of 2016. Company leaders say the closure will happen in phases. Pentair makes industrial enclosures. The company blames budget cuts and a decline in customer demand for its decision. About 350 people work at the plant. The work there will be moved to other Pentair factories around the country. Also new tonight, police have charged a man with murder months after a deadly crash in Lincoln County. Police arrested 21-year-old Brady Henderson this afternoon. Along with murder, he's charged with contempt of court. Police say that early on July 7th, Henderson's car flipped over along Highway 150 near Stanford. They say a passenger, 19-year-old Jacob Miller, was killed. Police think alcohol played a role in the crash. Today, an Ohio jury convicted a Madison County man of killing an 87-year-old woman. The jury found 57-year-old Daniel French guilty of aggravated murder. The sentencing phase will begin Wednesday. French could face the death penalty. Police say in 2012, French posed as a maintenance worker to get into Barbara Howe's apartment near Cincinnati. They say he then killed her and placed her body in the trunk of her car. French had already pled guilty to burglary and robbery charges. We have an update tonight on a Scott County man found days after police say his car crashed in Harrison County. UK hospital leaders say 77 year old Wilbur Herod has been upgraded to serious condition. Police say they found him yesterday in his wrecked car off White Oak Pike near Cynthiana. They say the car crashed down a steep embankment days earlier. Herod had been reported missing over the weekend. It has now been a month since a Russell County woman disappeared, and tonight there is still no sign of her. Family members say on September 30th, 24 year old Whitney Copley told them she was going out, but no one has seen or heard from her since. Family members say there's now a $6,000 reward in the case. They say they just want answers. As a family, we've been searching on our own pretty much every day and on the internet, constantly, you know, looking for clues. Family members say Copley has two children. They tell us it's not like her to go somewhere without telling them where she's going. Voters in Kentucky weighing in on Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis in the newly released WKYT Herald Leader Bluegrass Poll. 46% think that lawmakers should remove her from office for refusing to issue marriage licenses. 47% think she should stay the Rowan County Clerk. The rest are unsure. Davis has cited her religious beliefs for not issuing marriage licenses to same-sex couples. For an interactive look at the Bluegrass Poll results, go to WKYT.com. New tonight, a community rally was held to let police officers know they're appreciated. The first Lexington Law Enforcement Appreciation Night was held at Centenary United Methodist Church on Tates Creek Road. Members of local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies were honored for their service. 
Organizers say recent police deaths in Kentucky and elsewhere around the country are a reminder of the risk police officers face every day. A routine trip turns into a nightmare when a passenger jet catches fire at a Florida airport. In nine minutes, we'll hear from a passenger on that plane. And then some big changes are in the works for the UPS facility in Louisville, and they're expected to create any new jobs.